Well, hello, everybody. Seasons greetings from your host, Stefan Satani. And the season is not Christmas, but it's actually a hot Phoenix summer. So I guess what I just told you is the equivalent of a middle finger. However, let's move past it. I apologize. I want to give you a big old embrace, metaphorically speaking, with this episode. It is ready to just grab you by the shoulders and pick you up and scream, I love you. And that's how powerful this episode is, is because it has none other than an amazing guest, Ophira Eisenberg, host of NPR's Ask Me Another, comedian, storyteller, author of the book, Screw Everyone, Sleeping My Way to Monogamy. And we talk about so many things. I feel like, guys, after 260 episodes of a comedy advice podcast, we finally arrived at the advice stop. So this train stayed there for maybe five or 10 minutes to talk about some little pearls that we shucked from the mouth of Ophira. That sounded weird, but she had some amazing little gems of wisdom. And I hope it is useful for you guys because it's actually useful for me. We talked about some really cool stuff that I have started to employ and re-employ in my life to make me less anxiety ridden, more focused and a more efficient human being. So I hope you guys find it too. Also support Ophira. She's got a live taping of her album at the New York Comedy Club. Links are in the show notes. It's going to be August 1st. So head on over there and be ready to laugh because Ophira is a hilarious human being, great storyteller. And oh, we talked about it on the show, but NPR's Ask Me Another is sunsetting and Ophira and Jonathan are going to be galloping into the sunset. Well, their horses will be, they might not. Maybe they will. I'm not sure if they have horses or allow them in Brooklyn, but they will be riding into the sunset and maybe the sunrise will carry the show on another station. Who knows? But we reminisce a little bit on some of the favorite moments, some of her learning moments of being a great host. And she is one of the best radio and podcast personalities ever. She's so good. At one point, I thought she had froze because she was so intently listening. So uh, be ready for that and be ready to not only support her, support me if you've got any supporting capacity left. I know that we all are just trying to support ourselves. We've only got two legs, most of us. Some have less, some have more. I'm not sure if you've been to Nebraska, but <laughs> sorry, Nebraskans. I'm just kidding around. But have you seen you guys lately? I haven't seen any Nebraskans. I'm just poking fun. Nobody's seen a Nebraskan, I feel. I think it's probably a made up thing. Maybe it's like Australia, as the flat earthers say. I'm going off on a tangent, but support me is what I'm really trying to say. I know that I buttered y'all up, even though you don't need any butter in Nebraska. <laughs> oh, God, please follow me on Instagram. And if you haven't yet subscribed, leave a review, send some love. And I am going to be performing comedy this Sunday at the Bridge Improv Theater at Tempe, Arizona, August 1st, five o'clock. It's going to be booked spots and then an open mic. So if you want to come watch and then do your own comedy, you can do that as well. And then I'll also be hosting at JP's Comedy Club in Gilbert, Arizona, the 26th through the 28th. Links. Ooh, sorry, had some indigestion. All those words just bubbling up in my tum tum, and they just need to come out. I'm erupting like Mount Vesuvius, Miss Mount Vestefius. Am I? So watch out. This hot magma is boiling up to the surface as I, well, I finished my plugs. So I guess it was just a little smoke. Sorry about that, guys. But here comes the real eruption the beginning of this episode. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Ophir. How are you? How's it going? Good. I was just going to say, I just got my hair cut and I'm like, I just want to do this. Because <laughs> I feel like my bangs are short and I haven't really looked in the mirror. Anyways, this is not a mirror. This is a, so I'm going to hide my view before I obsess about my fucking haircut. <laughs> well, you know, as I, with looking at my hair and somebody that doesn't really care too much, just kidding. I put hours <laughs> into this I'm combing it just did. just the right way exactly gotta make sure the waves have the ebb and flow but the haircut looks phenomenal by the way it looks very it's, nice you know thank you every hair was cut as i like to say <laughs> every hair <laughs> which no is what you pay term. for yeah, it's true though yeah. I, 
I remember when I came to New York, actually, and I, I had no money, and I was like, how do I do anything? And uh -huh. I went to one of those um, hair, you know, like salons have nights or they have students they have apprentices and they will try to get people in to get free haircuts for their yes and uh i got so i was like great oh my god free haircut and this lovely woman i hope she found a different vocation but she <laughs> gave i mean it was like 17 haircuts rolled into one like there was I, one haircut happened on this side of my head a different haircut happened on the back side of my head. Every, I mean, it was like no oh, two no. hairs. No two hairs were the same length. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It was like a beautiful collage, almost a montage yeah. all on one head. It was like, yeah, exactly, exactly. It was like a sampling of haircuts. I was a sample plate of haircuts. <laughs> Oh no! Oh my! Yeah, this this comes from the '90s. This part right here, it comes from the punk rock <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. '70s. <laughs> right? Do you want to oh, see my... bangs in a few different styles? Fantastic! Look at this woman's forehead. <laughs> oh no! So wait, so, after uh, the haircut, did you get it corrected immediately, or did you have to go a day? Well, I couldn't. Two? Yeah, I did get it corrected, but I couldn't get it corrected immediately because some of it was too, like it would have been just basically shaving my head. Oh no. So oh, no. I basically put it back and like, I think I wore like two high ponytails with whatever was left. It was, you know, I mean, I guess in some ways someone could have been like, Oh, you're doing like suicide girls or whatever. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, no, it was just, uh, and I think I don't usually wear ha wear hats, but I remember at the time I was like, I am going to go to a hat shop. Perhaps there is a <laughs> chapeau that will hide this monstrosity. And then, uh, I did, I did go fix it. And I just remember, you know, whatever. I mean, women's haircuts are like a whole thing, but, and people yeah. who cut your hair, um, they tend to, they don't have a light touch, you know, in the sense that they're not there to make sure you feel, feel okay when you walk in. Cause that's not a good business model to look at your mm -hmm. hair when you walk in and sit down and go, this is fantastic. Whoever's been cutting your hair has been doing such a great job. I don't, they look at you and they go, what ha happened now? <laughs> In this case, the person had every right to say that, but I just felt so bad and so stupid, right? The oh, shame, my... oh, the shame no. No, for not having no. enough money. I have to say I've been in the same seat, I guess, barber seat, because I did also get a cut from The Apprentice and things didn't go that badly. I think there were maybe one or two different eras or styles of hair, but <laughs> it was... The... It's also my head is very hard to accommodate because it's a very big head. And then I also I my wife calls it the alien bump where I've got a little bump on the back of my head, too. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, so. so, you know, I have a, when I was a kid, um, French braids were very popular for little girls. Uh -huh. And also I was in ballet. So they would do a lot of your hair in French braids for like the special recitals. Uh -huh. And that's when and French braids very much showed everyone in the world that I have a perfectly egg-shaped head. It goes to a point. I looked, you know, I looked like a, a cone head. Yeah, from an SNL sketch. That's what I looked oh, like. Oh, no! <laughs> so, yeah, everyone, you, everyone has to compensate for their head. And then oh, I actually no. said that to my hairdresser today, and she goes, yeah, I know you have an egg-shaped head. That's why I, I do different kinds of cutting on the side of your head to make it look more round to fill it out. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm feeling a little vulnerable today as it is. Could we just back <laughs> it off? Back off a little bit. That is so funny. My barber <laughs> says this, well, the last time I went to him back 10 years ago, whatever it was, but I used to have razor fades. So then it would be nice yeah. and tapered up here. And he was like, I know you've got the weird alien bump in the back. So I actually keep it. So it's right below it. So you, uh, nobody notices. I'm like, thank you for that. It's so. so funny. It's like in some ways bedside manner and the person doing your hair is like a whole thing because I mean, it would be exhausting to have to you know, basically deal with people on that level day in, day out. Yes. Yes. So, but in the same Absolutely. way, like I have a real thing with doctors and bedside manner. I am like crazy about them having gentle bedside manner. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah. And I, and now I feel like I might be on a crusade that hairstylists have to start pulling out some more, like, you know what I love about you? The bump on the back of your head. It's unique. It's special. 
It yes. looks, you know what? It looks great when you're walking away. Oh, I, oh man, man. <laughs> I, I would love if people, yes, if they cherished and relished my bump, I feel like yeah. they could call it the little love bump on the back right. of my head. They could and, be like, uh, do you want us to like, do you want us to like highlight the bump? Where, where are you at? Do you want us to dye it blonde or a different <laughs> color? It can really accentuate. That's right. More. Exactly. Oh, I right. love that. They could, they could say to me, did you know egg-shaped head people are just considered more beautiful? And I'd be like, I, until now. And now it all makes sense. Thank you. And you, and you found out at Ronnie's Salon, which has done the research. We found egg-shaped head people. That's right. Just, That's they're right. the smartest. Yes. They tell the funniest jokes. They're, uh, they're great. They're great people. Oh, man. They're great people. Well, this has been a, a great a great intro to a comedy <laughs> advice podcast with your host, Stefan Sassani. Join me today in that lovely voice, or if you're watching, lovely face, and fresh haircut that you're seeing fresh is none other than uh, stand-up comic, author, and host of NPR's Tell Me Another, Ophira Eisenberg. Clap, 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 clap. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I never know exactly what to do for the beginning, and now it's gone into, like, lower than a golf clap. I think it's... Well, you know, and, uh, and obviously we just spent over a year not hearing a group of people clap. Unless yes. you live with a bunch of people that clap in your house, I guess. <laughs> It, it, it is kind of we have a two story so my wife and i was like babe can i get some lasagna <laughs> so it's it's a weird clap thing but it's not as pleasant as an intro clap that would be better yeah, if, my, if i uh came out of the bedroom and was like look who's up today look who <laughs> well it is done and over to you oh you know what i'm gonna do that from now on i'm gonna applaud people I'm awake I like the, oh man, I, I kind of like that slash it is abrupt for me. It would me. be terrifying, a, it would be terrifying. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it is an absolute pleasure to have you. And and I got jolted awake a little bit when I heard the news that Tell Me Another is actually sunsetting and the last episode is approaching. What a, what a weird word. That is the word that people are using, sunsetting. Talk about the light touch of a- Yeah, yeah. I'm that's expecting- That's like what your, what your hairdresser would say. Oh, the yes. show's sunsetting. I'm sunsetting this look for another look because <laughs> we're going New Horizon. But I, yes. I hope I just imagine you and Jonathan wearing cowboy hats galloping off. That's right, the they're galloping off. Yes, that is true. I mean, will will there's lots of speculation of where and what will happen. The fans mm. right now are really in a way that uh, I didn't know would happen are just really are like on social media it's very vocal and saying all these things and you know of course as someone like yourself who does a podcast uh mm -hmm. you know audio over the course of the last year especially just became such a huge part of people's lives to for their sanity and people explored more podcasts uh, mm -hmm. because they were looking for entertainment and they were looking for a connection to the rest of the world when they mm. weren't able to have one in person. So mm -hmm. just so much more uh, extra love, I would say, from people going like, no, 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 over the last year, you know, you were, you guys were my friends and I needed this and I needed this break from the news and the events and yes. escapism. And, yes. you know, we just, we play a lot of silly games and just talk about, we talk about our world, but we, we don't really talk about the news uh, mm -hmm. and it's the material is somewhat evergreen. So yeah, mm -hmm. who knows? I feel, I feel like it will end on NPR, but I don't know oh. what's going to happen next. Maybe the sun will rise on a different station. Maybe, or... That's right. There's going to be a sunrise. <laughs> yes. It will be sun rising on uh, who knows where, but or maybe, or it, maybe it will just be something else somewhere else, something else altogether. Who knows? There, there, yes. Who there's knows? A lot but of, I, there's a lot of chatter. That, yes. Lots of chatter indeed. And I mean, really you, you've had a slew of amazing guests on there. I also think you have one of the loveliest voices on radio and podcasts. Oh, that's very nice. And I feel, I mean, nice. you and Jonathan, you've got this chemistry that alchemists must be searching their whole lives for. It's just so good. And I think that- Very lucky. Very, so very good. lucky. So good. And I think if they're, I'm just imagining there's no college course or, or degree for podcasting, but I think there should be because there's a lot of podcasters out there and- There is. 
there's a lot of learn. I mean, I could learn a thing or two and I felt like I have learned a thing or two or three from tell me another and you guys, cause it's such a good format too. Like you said, um, you guys have some beginning banter, you have guests from, ev- from everywhere. And then you guys yeah. have some nice, delicious, digestible trivia that just makes me hungry for more. And so I just <laughs> binge these episodes and I'm like, Oh my God, it's three in the morning. What am I doing with oh, my life? That's, yeah, what, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> Uh, thank you. Yeah, no, it's and definitely during the live, sh- like we used to be live show, a live show show, which was such a different animal, especially translating that into a podcast. But, mm-hmm. you know, that's what we did. It was a live show and everyone kind of got to feel the feeling of being in a live show by listening to mm-hmm. it. And mm-hmm. I love live. Obviously I do stand up. I love live. That's how I do things. But then we changed it to this pandemic version and just mm-hmm. because of the tone of that, it became a little bit more intimate. Attention listeners across the galaxy, all the way from Australia to Houston, do we have a pube problem? If so, our friends at Manscaped have cleared you for takeoff with their fourth generation and brand new lawnmower 4.0. Kick your pubes to the next planet with the performance package 4.0. The orbits in your pants will feel like you're in zero gravity when you use the best tools for the job from the leaders in male grooming. Join the 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get your rocket ready for takeoff by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code ACAP. Now, I've tried to trim my clackers with regular trimmers, scissors, heck, even just yanking them out. But you know what? Each time there's blood or tears or both. So guys, don't be a silly goose. Be a smart duck. Get the new Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. This spaceship is here to guide you on a journey to trim your body, balls, butt, and even Uranus. I'll tell you what, I got one and I used it and I went on several trips around the galaxy. Abort hairy balls and buzz lightyear that Woody with Manscaped. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code ACAP at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code ACAP at manscaped.com. For a clean trinity and beyond, your space balls will thank you. And yeah, there was something really cool that came out of that. Mm -hmm. So it actually taught me a lot about podcasting. Because it's it was it's weird. It's like a specific challenge to do a live show where you're both talking to a crowd and one listener at the same time. Oh, oh. And so huh. you know, there's nothing really you do to address that, except for you just got to be a little careful of, you know. Honestly, I used to I used to yell in the beginning because I was so used to getting on stage and kind of you know you rev people up with with voice and loudness sometimes. And I learned very quickly, you can't do that. That just like drives your listeners crazy. So I remember I listened to one of the first episodes driving in my car and I almost switched lanes. Did you really? (laughs) I'm used to the clapping of my wife waking me up. So I'm, I'm totally used to it. There might be some others that aren't, but I was totally fine. Made me feel at home actually. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. That's what we aim to do. Yeah. No, really early on, I, they gave me a voice, uh, like a voice coach who mm-hmm. worked with a lot mm-hmm. of commercial radio people. And one of the first things she said to me was like, lower your register. Because especially when I was nervous, I would go right up here. I would just go right up higher. And I'm not a singer or anything like that. I think a lot of people uh, who are voice trained would be like, yeah, 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 of course you do that. But I just was huh. used to just being like, I don't know, doing whatever I thought was effective in the moment just making it up and so she was really like you know you gotta lower your your register because otherwise people are just gonna feel like you're yelling (laughs) like berating them (laughs) i mean she actually said this thing that now i look back at and go wow that's like a very she was like people will only hear their mother or wife nagging at them which i think is very specific yeah yeah yeah, very specific (laughs) Did you have a? Did you have that haircut from The Apprentice? Then was she getting some vibes from the? <laughs> right, that must have been it. Yeah, that must have been it. But it, it, yeah, wild, right? It makes a lot of sense, and it actually makes me think back to I don't know, thirty seconds ago when I was yelling and thinking maybe I could control that register a little bit because when I go back to the sound waves and the editing stage of this yeah. podcast, you'll see the little spike. The, I call them little Steph spikes because it's when Steph and screams or yells, and <laughs> I'm like, maybe I should. Now it's all it's all coming together. I should probably yeah, it, lower my voice. Listen, no, no, no. That is what that software is for. <laughs> yes. That is it's what a, editing is for. 
it says here, let me come here. Let me cradle that voice down a couple decibels and it'll get to a nice pleasant. Yeah. And you know, I mean, editing too. The, the, uh, that was like another thing that I've learned about podcasting is of course that some people don't edit. Some people just turn on the microphone and, and that's what they do. I feel, I find like that is uh, un, like, it's a, that's a lot. It's a feat. Yes. It's a feat. Yes. Um, and and I applaud that. And many other people edit. And, you know, when we were doing stuff, as we do with celebrities, especially through Zoom, but they would be f- afraid, of course, of the trivia game because they don't know what the trivia game is ahead of time. Mm. We usually, like, we ask for their interests. Hopefully we get some interests back from them in time and then try to write a game around that. Uh, and also, you know, tell them, like, no, 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 this is not to, like, stump you. This is to like show you off. So if we're going to make sure it's something that you were going to have fun with, you know, yeah, or yeah. if someone's really game, you just, they just are like, I don't care if I fail, which is always my favorite when they're just like, Oh no, I, I understand there's nothing really on the line. So yes. whatever you give me, we'll just have fun. But we do right. tell them like, here's the deal. Like we're going to play this game. Here's how it's going to go. And if you need a hint or the answer, we will first give you the hint. And if it's going really bad, we might almost feed you the answer and then we will edit that part out. Oh, that is editing. So it rarely yeah. happens. Most of the time just people are, but it like puts them, I mean, I don't even know if it's ever happened that we are just like, no, say this without totally joking about it and right, being right. so transparent. Uh, <laughs> but I feel like you just have to like put people at ease a little bit. Yes. Yes, I totally agree with that. And I feel like, oh, oh, I thought you froze for a second. You were just intently oh. listening. Which is like... No, and I, my therapist who I do Zoom with says I don't blink as much as the average person. So if I look <laughs> frozen, it just might be who I am. Which is me. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call that out. That was uh, <laughs> That's the first time somebody's actually listened to something that I've had to say on the podcast. So I was a little shocked. I was like, are you frozen? Is this buffering? Not again. Um, I forgot what I was even saying, but no, the editing and the, and the putting people at ease, I feel like is, is really important. Even if you don't get to a point where you're feeding someone directly an answer, the fact that they feel like they have that lifeline, I think makes them feel more comfortable. Like Absolutely. Said, is- Absolutely. Yeah. Cause they just have to know there's a soft landing in there. Yes, yes, exactly. I, I, have, I have my window open a crack, and I feel like you are getting the ambient noises of, like, a crazy, busy Brooklyn. I'm just going to close it all the way. Oh, yes, please. go. I will edit this. this part out. I miss New York a little bit after hearing those noises. Where I are you? I heard... I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. <gasps> oh, that's right. That's right. Yes, yes. Ha- and what's the, the temperature there? The temperature is, I think it's 112 today, something around there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Was, All right. Uh, sweater weather, as we call it. Yeah. If it's yeah. under the 120s. It's 90 here, but, you know, in a weird way where you're living the same summer, which is inside. Yes, absolutely. And I actually, there was a heat wave and it went up. I feel really bad for the Oregonians in Washington teens washingtonians i don't know what to call them but all the people that didn't have ac when uh 115 120 weather but our during the heat wave our ac broke and i think it got up to 106 inside here it was rough it was a free oh sauna goodness. basically yeah i am so sorry oh i have i appreciate it we did get it fixed i'm i'm still alive so yeah we got it yeah, fixed congratulations but- thank you the uh, the ac guys when they fix it they give me a shirt that says my ac broke and all i got was this lousy shirt (laughs) nice memorabilia but i'm sure that was happening all over right yeah it it actually was because everyone was cranking their ac high and then a bunch broke and so then a bunch of people had to either get a hotel or sweat it out or just leave their house because it would inevitably just explode at some point in the heat it's yeah crazy crazy but fun times everybody yes fun times and speaking of fun times um august 1st you're gonna be recording your album at the new york comedy club that's right so you know it's so funny i was listening to your episode with my vocal doppelganger i've been told (gasps) jackie cation yes oh first off thank you for listening and second (laughs) off i when i was listening to your episodes i was like 
there are certain points, certain yeah. points. I think when you get smart alecky or have a, a nice quip, <laughs> I hear a little Cajun. It's like Cajun Cajun seasoning in there. But... So it's so funny because we didn't even know each other until someone, because we have been living in different on different coasts for ever. Uh, uh -huh. So we, I didn't even know until someone pointed it out. Like someone on her podcast or whatever, vice versa, either just said, like, you guys sound like each other. And then I, I feel like that was the intro to us getting to know each other. Oh my gosh, that is yeah. delightful. That's so cool. And I, I remember hearing uh, an episode of an interview or some podcast that you were on that you were talking about performing at the New York Comedy Club. And one of the cool things is the owner, she allowed not just you and another female to be performing <laughs> right after each other, but right. you guys even sounded a little the same. And when you said that, I was like, I wonder if it's Jackie Cation. That yeah, is so yeah, yeah. No, right. Because, you know, there tends to be still at clubs, this sort uh -huh. of old school mentality of either, and not every club and not every room, but right. still it happens right. at a major clubs, either one woman per show. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And then if you have more than one woman per show, you do not put them back to back. <sighs> That's it's just wild. You know, although you can just have like 17 white guys in hoodies, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like bald white guys in hoodies. Like that can be an entire show. And I don't think, you know, I don't think anyone would, they would be like, what's wrong? These are all great people. But yeah, yeah, two yeah, exactly. women, two women back to back, and it was like, oh my god, they're going to think it's a breast cancer benefit. Like I, I don't really know. It's like, <laughs> oh, but then that woman's going to burn all that woman's material. It's it's crazy that it's still to this day like that. And I, I know, like you said, not everywhere, but I've been to a fair amount of comedy clubs, yeah. and I, I mean, it's not that I was looking out for that, but I did notice that I was like, you know, the lineup didn't really have many women on it. It was basically the white bald guy in the hoodie and, yeah wild uh, and so then you just it, so then it stands out so then when at new york comedy club not only was i was like oh my god jackie and i are on the same show because she was visiting new york at the time but then i was like oh she put us back to back i mean these things shouldn't stand out yes yes but yes. it made it made a it made a profound uh a statement in my mind that's fantastic. And I'm glad that that's starting to happen, at least there and hopefully more and more because it's, uh, it'll be nice to have that type of variety and more women comedians because I feel there are also... Just, and just like, yeah, just more voices in general, right? Yes, 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 I agree. I agree. Yeah, I think and uh, to not think about it. Like, I like a well-curated show and certainly... Mm -hmm. Anytime I've produced a show, I, I put some time into it. Like, you know, who, who's like energy, but I always think about an energy. I'm just like, okay, like I want someone high energy here. And I want someone like, if someone is lower energy, they're better here. Cause that's just going to be more successful. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but, or someone newer following someone more that's really seasoned, that newer person might feel like a lot of angst about that. So you want to just make it as cushy as possible. That, but yeah, that... I just logistically that makes so much sense and yeah so logical to do it that way it's yeah well but but to the so, to the new york comedy club so august 1st is going to be the the new album yes recording. and i was saying i was listening to jackie cation's episode and she had mentioned i mean it's sort of funny that we're in the same boat too she recently recorded her album but i too was supposed to record my album on i think it was like april fifth or sixth mm. of 2020 oh which did, so, not, did not happen yeah yeah that's a, a bad timing i think that's <laughs> yeah, that was that was bad timing it was oh, definitely no. not gonna happen oh no uh, i oh. think and you know what was even so funny about that because that was so early on and i think the everything around here clo in new york closed around it must have been like March 15th or 14th, 15th or 16th, right in there. Everything closed. And then we were all so naive and just, you know, naive on one end, but just purely did not know. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I was like, but my taping will probably still happen, right? Like there was a oh, solid God. week and a half that we were like, this is going to happen, right? 
Oh my gosh. I, it brings me back. I remember that there were things that we had family events and just different things planned. And we're like, we're good. This is still on. Right. Right. Maybe. And right? then I think there was some point where so many things ended up getting canceled that I was like, okay, we're going to buckle up and we're going to keep our applause contained to our. That's room. right. Yeah. Yep. So three people applause. So yeah. So oh. it, then it was like, let's do this. So then, you know, things are open. Things are much more hopeful now. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, New York mm -hmm. is, is really good with um, the amount of people vaccinated. Yes. And I heard also showing proof of vaccina vaccination oh, yeah. cards. I heard at the, the live taping August 12th at the Bell House of NPR's All of them. Yeah. Also New York it. Comedy Club. All, they, nice. all of these venues demand proof of vaccination. Um, and, you know, I, and so that's like, that's the best you can do, basically, which is great because from my point of view, the people I never wanted to play for, like it is a little bit of a weeder outer of the people I wouldn't want to play for anyhow. Sorry, some of your listeners. But if you are one of those people that is saying, I just need to do some of more, my own research, don't come to my show. Unless you're a researcher. Unless you're a researcher. Unless you're actually a scientific researcher and you want to do more scientific research. But if, you are, if your research is a Google search and maybe like a headline on Twitter, don't come to my show. <laughs> oh my gosh i i had heard a uh an episode of you on keith and the girl talking about that too those people that are just like i want to wait and do my research <gasps> first i mean and okay wait a second where you are do you have that i've heard it from some people okay. yeah they're like i want to do my research and i'm like I, I think that the researchers that made the vaccine and did all those <laughs> clinical trials i think they did that research <laughs> if you want to maybe ask one of them for the thousands or hundreds of thousands of pages of research that might be a good place to start i don't know i mean just but. because you have google maps on your phone do you think you're a cartographer like why i i think there should be a three strike policy <laughs> where if there are certain questions that you put into google you <laughs> they're like okay that's one strike two more and you lose your phone you're back to the little Nokia with snake for entertainment. That is so perfect. That's right. If you put like uh, something like, uh, can coronavirus be cured with bleach? The, well, that, that might be two strikes. <laughs> Certain <laughs> questions, that'll be like three full strikes. That's just like a, a full house of yeah. uh, banishment right. from Google. Oh my yes. gosh. But, so I wanted, to, I wanted to get this album done too because... Uh -huh. You know, because you end up feeling like you start, you get revved up with stuff and then you have this material and uh, and I've written more material in the last year because how could mm -hmm. you not? Well, I guess you could <laughs> not. Uh, while I was also fighting for my own survival, I managed to write a few jokes. Um, I but... could just see the counting down the days, <laughs> like scratching it in the wall and then a punchline here and there and one more day. Uh, yeah, right. it's... It's it it really is an accomplishment to have been even though we were just inside where it's like oh I could do anything it really was tough sometimes to be able to get out of bed and be productive so that absolutely is awesome to hear that you were able to or even to write just more material. have the wherewithal to like let your brain take anything and do the twist in it to make it into comedy because you know sometimes I am not when I've gone through really traumatic situations and like honestly not in the mood like i'm not mm -hmm. there yet mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. it's just you know that old tragedy plus time um yes. but so yeah so then i was just like i would like to get this material out there i want it out of my brain i want it down uh yes, before yes. It, you know some and some of it uh, it's not irrelevant, but time is passing. And so I just want, that's Jackie, that's what she was saying in her podcast too. And I was like, I relate to this so much that it's you, I'm, I'm, I tell stuff that is authentic and true to my life in my mm -hmm. show. And I understand that you don't have to do that. You could take great liberties. And I can say that something happened yesterday when it happened seven years ago and nobody's going to battle me on it. But for me, I want it to still be dynamic. Like I want it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to be something that is uh, within my reality. Oh, I get it. I get it. Yeah. That Even is... though 
creatively, I should just give that up already. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I do have something to say about your, and I'm curious about what the style is going to be for this new album, because I've watched several, and speaking of being able to take some comedy into stories where things really hurt. And I, I heard uh, several stories of yours um, at the moth where you told mm -hmm. stories, one of which where you were talking about uh, not wanting to have kids, getting breast cancer, um, having a miscarriage, and then actually um, conceiving and, and having a child. And I was like, man, it's so, it's really cool because I started to dive into the pool of storytelling where when I first started reading about stand-up, there were so many teachers out there online, which I don't know if it's, that's me Googling stuff and doing my research, yeah. but- Well, but that's how are, you would find them. Yeah, and, and people I mean, and teachers, they're saying, um they're they're like well don't get vaxxed and no i'm kidding they're like well <laughs> try it don't tell stories don't tell stories try and tell as many punchlines as you can and i don't know maybe now i'm thinking maybe that's for beginners that might be a good way to do it but i didn't really hear a lot of storytelling and then i saw your comedy and not all of its storytelling but the storytelling is absolutely phenomenal where it's not it's not highest punchlines per minute but it is a beginning, middle, end. It feels like there's some sort of change throughout the process. <laughs> Thank you. And and it's beautiful. It's it's really cool to see. And I um I also I had Chris Gethard on yeah. a couple episodes ago, and him and then you. It just really started to inspire me so much that I haven't really done stand up, but with this podcast, I've started to get invites to do shows. I'm People sure. Think I can make a joke, and so. I've, I'm going to tell my first story tonight, actually. <gasps> what? Yes. Yes. Where? Uh, it's, it's in Phoenix, um, but it, at a bar um, yeah. where they have comedy shows every, two, every Wednesday. And I got invited to do a guest spot. And it's seven minutes, so it's going to be a shorter story. No, that's perfect. That's perfect. I, uh, yeah, I mean, I when, when you do the Moss Slams, they're five minutes. Oh, nice. So, so, and if I may, right now, yes, yes, just, please. I'm jumping in. I'm jumping in. I'm very excited about oh. this for you. Does it have to be a funny story or anything? Um, it can be anything. It can okay. be anything. Yeah. Okay. Because, yeah. you know, I feel like, so the five minute thing or seven minutes thing is actually, I think, a wealth of time. It is a wealth of time. I have heard now from like, because I've hosted a lot of moth events, and I have heard people tell, I mean, s the biggest story from their life, something that you would think, you know, you could dedicate a, a book to, honestly, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they will tell it within the time constraint of five minutes. And it's effective. It's totally effective. And it's great. Wow. You know, it's, it's possible. So I think like seven minutes... You have so much time in seven minutes. And I always think of, uh, I believe it's Kurt Vonnegut. Uh, and I always think of this when I'm trying to write, especially something storytelling for stand-up stage, which is a different, it's a different kind of story than a story for a storytelling stage. Different mm -hmm. expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, which mm -hmm. is his advice for just writing in general, writing stories, is start as close to the end as possible. Ah, Okay. Okay. Because I think there's this idea that when we start to tell a story, we're like, you know, we're talking about something that happened yesterday, but somehow we feel like we have to be like, you know, when I was in the fifth grade, because somehow we feel that is a setup for yesterday, but it's like, n no, <laughs> start in, it, as close to the conclusion of this uh -huh. story and you will, you, everything that you need, you can pepper in as needed as long as we you know get the get to get to get the, as close to the end in the beginning um because yeah and then you're just taking good use of everyone's time your time your audience's time mm -hmm. yeah that is uh, if i haven't learned enough from this podcast <laughs> controlling <laughs> register focus on your audience of multiple people and one listener at a time and uh storytelling i mean this, this could be a class in itself oh my gosh 
Right. Sorry, Thank I get I get very passionate about these. Well, especially storytelling because I feel like um, it is still, you know, we all have been taught in school story structure, and you like at language arts or whatever you take in mm -hmm. elementary school, you're even sort of taught these things. But it seems such a nebulous, hard thing. In some yes. ways, yes. And I think it's because, in a way, it just seems so open ended. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and everyone's like, well, I'm a storyteller, right? What is a storyteller? Or, and it's, it's a, kind of a lame term even. Yeah. 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 I yeah. definitely hear that connotation sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. When true. someone's like, I'm a storyteller, you're like, ugh, what does that mean? <laughs> oh, excuse me while I leave right now. Oh. Like, you don't know if that means like they're a monologist or if they work like, uh, marketing a brand. You know, like you, it's it's used True. in such a dumb way. Or if they're a camp counselor sitting around or a fire. <laughs> exactly. Telling... Right. There's also the childhood, the childhood yeah. storyteller. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, it's so cool to hear. And it is going back to the point of very intimidating for me, where it's very nebulous on trying to write stories. And one of the reasons that I ended up getting back into or into stand up was because I wanted to improve my writing skills. And sometimes I'll have these stories in my head and I think there's this, Im this immense pressure on me where I'm like, I don't even know where to start because it's my thoughts are going all in different directions and I can't really pin down beginning, middle, end, can't get the what I think are the important details. And so I think it's a real challenge, maybe just for me, but I feel like for no. additional people. For everybody. So. No, for everybody. No, and the oh. good thing, like, I, I do that too. And, it, like, sometimes that doesn't get revealed for many drafts. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you just start to see it. But the good thing about telling a story, if you can listen, it's really hard to listen to the audience in the beginning because you're remembering the story and you're self-conscious about getting it all right and... Um, so that added, like being able to, to take away the feedback is just, it's a lot of work. So, you know, record yourself if you can, so you can listen yes. back. Um, yes. But when you hear, when you are able to hear the audience, you can hear when they are, um, they're, they're not following you or they need some clarification or they want more here. Like you can actually hear how mm. they will guide you a little bit because everyone has been told stories for years and years and years, whether it was in, in childhood or they read or, or what have you mm -hmm. like, well, this is what we're sitting around a bar or the, mm -hmm. whatever, the dining room table. So yeah, people have yeah. a really good innate sense of how a story sounds. Mm. And so mm. you can hear them react and go like, Oh, that doesn't belong there. And, and then fix it later. That... Or like, you're like, that wasn't a payoff. I thought it was a payoff, but it was not a payoff. So I've got to rejigger that to make sure people understand that that's a payoff. That is so interesting. It almost reminds me of the keto diet, how it's like we have to, <laughs> we eat meat or we, we don't eat grain because we're, we're just not used to it. And genetically, maybe we are programmed to be able to listen to stories and process information in that way. And then if something doesn't belong, we're like, hmm, this might not be. Yeah. And, but the hmm. most important thing, of course, Start as close to the end as possible, sure. But the most important yeah. thing yeah. is stakes. 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 Not the keto kind. The Not the keto kind. The but those steak. are delicious. <laughs> so, yeah, quite tasty. <laughs> quite tasty. <laughs> but yeah, if they if people don't feel if they don't connect with what is at risk, like they have to care. And they, they'll care about you because they'll put themselves in your shoes and they'll remember something that they cared about. So if you just, you know, if you talk about, I mean, heartbreak is just the easiest one. If you, everyone's mm -hmm. experienced heartbreak in some way. Uh, and so mm -hmm. if you talk about being devastated, the, if you were able to communicate in an effective way, why that breakup or this heartbreak was so important to you, everyone will hook on to that because they'll go, I know what this is. I am with you. I now I want to see you succeed. Could you do this better than I did? Oh, man. <laughs> what a 
And now I can see why you're so talented at storytelling. This is, it's even talking, telling the story about getting good at storytelling is captivating for me. This is. Yeah, I just, um, I just love it. I mean, I do love it and I find it very hard and I, I don't accomplish it often. You know, I have so many half-baked stories that I've written. I'm like, the ending's not there or like, I just don't know how to get this point in there. And so, you know, a lot of them are just works in progress for a long, long, long time. Mm -hmm. And I, I know you also do storytelling and you wrote your own book. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Through everybody. <laughs> what an awesome title. Amazing. And Thanks. talking about how you eventually, um, I don't know, the, the diplomatic yeah, so, way to say it, banged your way to monogamy, I guess. Yeah, right, the... right. Because it's called Screw Everyone Sleeping My yeah. Way to Monogamy. So yes, it is, yes, I mean, yes. yeah. So it's like, I, it's my story of, right, lots of different relationships yes. and short and long and uh everything in between and how uh i mean now i think the way women talk about sex and dating is so much better i you know but it, it was also like i yeah yeah i didn't really want to get married i wasn't very interested in yeah i was interested in love but i didn't care about like the whole mainstream trajectory of what I as a woman should be doing. Uh, mm -hmm. I ended up getting married because I found someone that I wanted to get married to, but we didn't even do that in a conventional normal way because I can't do anything in a conventional normal way. Nothing. You know, I heard studies show that um, <laughs> egg-shaped heads, they actually do things in conventional <laughs> ways. I heard it from my Call, barber. <laughs> callbacks are keys. Callbacks yeah. are keys. See, that's where you would end the story, by the way. That's how you, you just found an ending. Oh, man. Uh, uh, <laughs> I love that. Amazing. But I, I, to that point, I mean, of writing that book, and I'm sure having editors and, and different things like that, how is that compared to telling a story where you're just going up on, well, sorry, not just going up on stage, yeah. but you're writing your story, and then you go up on stage, kind of test it out, and continue to craft it that way. Was, well, it, was know, it a better it, experience, more frustrating? Well, it actually all worked together because the stories in that book, although, you know, the way you tell something and the way you write it is a little bit different, especially when it comes to comedy, uh, because mm -hmm. you can't use de use delivery when you're speaking, of course, but uh, when you're reading, you would have to do, you the reader is, it's more pace. And so you can, you can use um, punctuation for some of it. Mm -hmm. and words for some of it, but you just cannot replicate the kind of pauses and different things that you can do audioly. Audioly? Audio? Anyways. Audibly? We'll accept it. No, it's wrong. <laughs> yeah. uh, with, with writing. So, and also in writing, there's like, you can be more descriptive because mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. reader likes being pulled into a world, you know? Yeah. So, uh, but I would, I would write the stories. I would write some of these stories I would do them on stage, I would record them, and I always found that I was better orally than I was written. So mm -hmm, usually I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I told it better than I wrote it. So that I would almost transcribe it and go back to the document and marry the two. And that are, those are what the stories ended up being in the book. Most of them were right. on had a life on stage in some place at some point uh so but so honestly the editors had a very light touch the the editors oh. felt much more like copy editors to me oh you know I and see. just sort of I like see. different word you gotta clarify this da, 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 like just a lot of just pure writing just you know like sharpen the writing or change things around um i i, I honestly thought it was someone was just gonna you know hand me stuff back that was torn apart and red lines and what are you thinking and like there's what's the point of this anyways but no that didn't happen oh man that's well that's wonderful yeah oh. but working with a good copywriter is fantastic because you you know it's always it's always that thing where someone goes like different word choice this doesn't make any sense uh, can mm -hmm. you rewrite this for, for better clarity, cliche line. And at first you're like, ow, 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 ow. Uh, and then you read it and you go, yeah, you're totally right. All of that is correct. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Yes. Yes. I, that, that totally makes sense. It's funny because I, my day job is I do search engine optimization. Which oh. I, try, I write for Google basically. Oh, so, good. You can help me with my wiki page. Oh, absolutely. Anytime. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> Great, thanks. Whatever you want to rank for, I'll, I'll, I'll help you. I'll help you. But um, it, it's funny because I also work with copywriters and, and some sometimes there's a battle of, and I admit this, sometimes I'm like, we got to get that keyword in there. So then uh, it's like diapers. We are selling diapers. They are lovely diapers, big diapers, small diapers, diapers for kids and toddlers. and blah, blah. So yeah. um, anyway, it's, it's weird to be in to, during the day do that and then at night be like how can i be creative about my writing so google will never my, my comedy will never be discovered i think is what i'm trying to say but what are you um, talking my, about you have the, all the tools for your comedy to be the most discovered oh that's yes that's very true that's very true because if I, you put up a video of yourself telling a story you know how to like get people's eyes on it yes that is a good <laughs> yes absolutely so we'll see. I'm hiring Maybe. you. I'm hiring you. This is valuable. You have extreme value. Oh, I'm glad someone thinks so. This is great. I feel the round of applause in my head going off. So this is good. Good. Uh, but I, I was gonna. I am surprised that I don't ask more guests this. But I wanted to ask you: How often do you write a day, or maybe a week? Is a better question. But. So, yeah, I was in this, I'm a little off my routine right now, so I'm trying to get back on it. But I, you know, I also have a child. So that makes time uh, infinitely short, less of it. <laughs> <laughs> less time, <laughs> less time. There's many things. There's many things. Yes. But so, and and just keeping that in mind, I was struggling because you know I used to love just sitting down and writing for an hour. Mm -hmm. Let's say just sitting down and just having an hour chunk to write. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, you know, there was many th there were many things that got in the way of that. And then all uh, finding that hour, and then having a kid, it was even harder to find that hour. And then when you did have that hour, you were often either exhausted or had to do just a lot of other logistics to keep the household rolling. So then I changed everything. And what I was doing is once I got up and got my kid to school, uh, I would sit back down and I would just put a timer on my phone for 25 minutes. And I would just be like, all you have to do is write for 25 minutes. And if I didn't have anything top of mind to write, then, which often I did because I, you know, have things in progress that I always mm -hmm. feel like need some work. But then yeah. I would just go, I would take an old notebook of, because mm -hmm. of, I write all my stand up in notebooks. Mm -hmm. And and so I would take an old notebook and just go through it and start seeing if there was anything to build on, anything I didn't use. And then t either 25 minutes would be up and I'd be like, all right, that's all I have time for. I have to do all this other stuff. Or sometimes I would go, I feel like doing another 25 minutes. And so I just said it again. Nice. Uh, and, and I found that what it, all that crap that you've heard is true. If you do something for even a small amount every single day, it is way more effective and you get so much more done than if you just do a big chunk like once in a while. I totally agree with that and i can't remember where i read but i don't even know what the method is called maybe it's the pomodoro method yes i think that's where i got the 25 minutes from yes i found is, it, is there online, a thing 25 yeah yes online they, there's a well you can just put a timer for 25 minutes but online they have these pom pomodoro timers so they'll just set it for 25 minutes you click and then i remember trying to stack up my little tomatoes of how many tomatoes i did per day and it's, you're right, it's super helpful because an hour of something is really daunting, but 25 minutes isn't so bad. And so if you're able to convince yourself that, hey, I can do this for this amount of time, sometimes you'll get sucked into the zone and you can keep doing it and do another one. Or you don't do another one, but you got that one. And that's great. That's really great. And I am the worst with distractions and I feel uh, a lot of anxiety, but all the same things that I think a lot of people feel anxiety from, but I will say yeah. to myself, no email, every email can wait 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. 
Like there's everything. Mm-hmm. Twenty five minutes is a reasonable time for anything to wait. I agree. So it's just like sometimes an hour when I would do them, like, oh, I got an hour. I would, you know, halfway into it, I'd feel like, well, I better check on this because maybe this needs a response or I forgot to do this. Oh, my God. If that person's waiting for me to get back to them and I feel terrible, you know, all let all the garbage come back in. Yes. Wow. This has been uh, just an in- <laughs> insight. Like we're solving a lot of things. <laughs> you and I we're solving a lot yeah. of things. I'm going to put the right keywords in this so people are going <laughs> to find do. it. Lives will be changed. That's just <laughs> how it's going to be. Oh Thanks. my gosh. Well, we're going to wind down and um, we have some actually questions from yes. the Reddit advice column and uh, we'll go ahead and answer those. But before we do, I'm kind of an inspirational quote guy. So I like it. If I'm feeling down, if I got a bad haircut mm. or if the, ha- if the dresser is just like, Hey, what's that bump on your head? It makes you feel down. I like an inspirational quote to pick me up. So I like to ask my guests, no fear. I don't know if you have any inspirational quotes or if you're a quote gal, but are there any inspirational quotes that you yes. really like? Yes. I'm going to see. I think I can paraphrase it. It's one I wrote down a few days ago, but I think I can remember it. It is an air. It's based on the, uh, now I'm ruining it already. All right, here we go. Inspirational quote. <laughs> Uh, an arrow has to be pulled back in the bow in order for it to shoot forward. Oh, wow. That might have been one of the best yet, if I'm Oh, being thanks. Dang. That's a I've good ne- one, right? I've never heard it before. It is very meaningful and deep. And it's, yeah, it's beautiful. Beautiful. I, is that anonymous or is that by Dr. I can Seuss tell or? you yeah it's Dr. Seuss <laughs> <laughs> it was in the giving tree page five <laughs> uh I, I will find it I will find it before this is done okay wait here we go here we go I can tell you because basically oh it just okay yeah the perfectly written quote is the arrow has to draw back to fly ahead the arrow has to draw back to fly ahead. I said it a little bit wrong. And it just is attributed to proverb. Like, it's just a hmm. proverb. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I like I like the way you said it, maybe just a little bit better. Because I also, <laughs> when you notch it back, the I feel like there's a little bit of pressure. And so sometimes yes. we feel stress, we feel pressure, and we think that it's a totally bad thing. But sometimes that really helps us to be able to find methods of finding more efficient ways of doing things like the Pomodoro method or um, being able to set goals or, or do something. Cause yeah. Or yes. take a leap and tell a story for the first time. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, I feel included. This is great. And, uh, <laughs> and so I feel my little arrow is going to go forward tonight or maybe back, but it'll shoot forward at the next time when I tell a story. <laughs> and... Oh, it's going for it. Oh, it's going <laughs> for it. There's no way out of that one. Oh, well, that is an excellent, excellent quote. Thank you, Ophira. And yeah, I also did want to mention very quickly, I think the name Ophira is absolutely, I was dazzled by the name when I first saw and heard it. And I looked it up because I was like, I don't know, very uncultured man here. So I was like, what does this mean? And it means gold in Hebrew. Am I getting that correct? Yeah. Okay. That's very yep. cool. Still That's... working on that. Oh, man. And... <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Did by the way, you have siblings as well, brothers and sisters, or just yeah, I'm sisters? the youngest of six, so I have like, uh, I have three brothers and two sisters. Do they have really cool names too, or are they like Tom? They're all and oh my no oh no! It's a uh, Ellie, Elon, Orna, Abigail, Amir, and Ophira. So all these Hebrew names, all these old Hebrew names, and very mm-hmm. uh, is Israeli he- Hebrew names. Mm-hmm. Because, mm-hmm. you know, obviously when I say You're... Hebrew name, you could be like Rebecca or whatever, you know, Rachel. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's, that's very, that's beautiful. And it's, your father was from Israel. From Israel, so... yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Beautiful. Born in Israel before it was Israel. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Cause, oh, wow. Yeah. So, nice. you know, authentic. <laughs> <laughs> 
oh. <laughs> truly authentic. Oh man, well that's that's beautiful. I need to think of some good kids. Stefan, it's kind of like uh, the the Dijon of Stephen. It's just it's not too fancy, but it's uh, my so my yeah. uh, nephew's name is Stefan. Were you named after a particular Stefan or? I actually no, I wasn't. I was named Stephen, but I did rebrand in sixth grade and thought it was boring. So I was like, I'll go <gasps> Stefan. You're the best. You're the best. I love that you rebranded. You're like, you know what? I've already decided I'm better than this. I'm more interesting than this. I'm more. I, I if, will, I if will... you would have, if you would have told me I could rebrand in, what did you say? Sixth grade? Sixth grade. I think I would have gone with like Julie or Debbie <laughs> or something. I love, you know, those, I just wanted to have a name like just, whatever more, everybody else yes 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 i see i was the opposite because steven and then people well i got the inspiration because people would either just call me stefan because the spelling of the name is p-h-e-n so yep. it's 50 50 so i was like you know what I, I, to be honest it was because i watched family matters and steve urkel was a dork but then <gasps> when he turned into stefan he was <gasps> suave and cool so and you were like aha so Urkel changed my life is what I'm really trying to say. That's awesome. As a, fo as a fellow PHer uh, in a name, I understand that that just, we know the word phone very, very well, but somehow you put that PH somewhere else in a word and everyone's like, OP Hira? It's like, <laughs> oh no. Oh, why don't no. you understand language? O.P. Hira. Oh, man. That that sounds like a private detective. This is O.P. Hira in the 50s. Or they're always like, your name's Ophria, right? I'm like, have you ever heard that name? I mean, like, I know Ophira is, is not common, but Ophria? Is that even a possible? But, like, that's not a possibility of a name. Nobody no. has a name. No, 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 no. That sounds... Uh, yeah, that does not sound like Ophria. a name. Ophria. So, Ophria. It sounds like a chant for freeing of somebody in prison. <laughs> That's right. Oh, free. Oh, uh, free this guy. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, beautiful inspirational quote. I've actually got one in my back pocket. It's not by any person. It's not a proverb. It's by Inspirobot, which is a robot. Okay. It actually uses AI to go into the, I don't know where it goes, perhaps the New York times, Bible, Torah, Quran, comic books, all these different places. And it just puts together a beautiful quote and using AI. Okay, let's hear and it. If you go to inspirobot.io, you just click and it'll generate one right for you. It's beautiful. <gasps> okay. But this week, Inspirobot has told me, and we can interpret this. We can see how it feels. Maybe it's not as good as the, the arrow, but uh, we'll take a shot, I guess. Uh, notch back that arrow. If you want enough, you can make it so that your mother laughs. A robot did that. That was a robot. Ophira, do you make your mom laugh? I think I had heard that it's quite difficult for your family to chuckle or chortle. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's it definitely a family that likes a joke. Definitely a family that likes a joke, but not an easy laugh. So it has to be really good. Oh, okay. Or like, okay. just hit the right angle. It just has to hit the right angle. Mm. So, uh, but yeah, definitely. We, like, we all we're all, yeah, kind of serious and stressed. But also, like, nobody has that just like ongoingly buoyant kind of jokester uh, personality. But given an opportunity to like kind of let loose and enjoy it is just ongoing joke joking around and everyone has their different style whether it's like intellectual or kind of uh like goofy my my brother does that thing where he'll try to take everything what uh, way too far like he's that person that will just take it as far as it can go till it's uncomfortable yeah i think that might be my role in the family i come from five <laughs> brothers and sisters and i'm the one that pushes that envelope yeah I, it, it's uh I, you know i come from a family that we hop on the chuckle train quite a bit so we're a lot of jokesters parents little less so and my both my parents are very 
they're more religious so we can't say potty words and we sure. you know can't can't blaspheme and all that good stuff which is usually in good fun when we joke but my mom i think maybe if i take the perspective of my mom and think from her shoes from her perspective and then yeah. create a joke on that i can work really hard to make her laugh and sometimes yeah. that happens sometimes and it's still rewarding it's such a nice delicious laugh that i yeah feel my mom uh, my mom was very funny um she 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 actually passed away um this before the pandemic oh no um, i'm sorry yeah thank you it was it was about yeah almost a year before the pandemic which now i i look back on as a weirdly th- thankful i'm actually thankful mm-hmm. that it was before the pandemic mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. because i'll never have to teach her zoom but uh, there's a dark joke for you. But, uh, that that was a chore trying to get those <laughs> those family oh, game nights on. My mom her her video would be backwards, and then she's like, "I can't hear you," and all the th- things. The, the silver the things. lining. <laughs> yeah. So, but my mom was, you know, uh, although like she was just totally even in, her, in she lived to be ninety, even in her eighties was just funny always finding a joke and within her circle was known as the like jokester which is not exactly how i think of her when i was a kid like she always was like social and and stuff but i didn't Uh ever think about her as like a uh like that kind of person huh and just but that's who that's she was always cracking some joke about things yeah that's So, so funny that's the things we learn about our parents. I learned I my know. mom was just as unfunny with her friends as she was with <laughs> us. So. Very consistent. Very consistent. <laughs> yes. her, her true unfunny colors shone through. Always. Uh, through That's and beautiful. Through. Oh, man. Well, um, I think we can close it off with one question and then we can bid each other sure. adieu. Unless you have to run to something, then we can just cut it off right now and say thank you. No, no. Well, yeah, let's do a question. Okay, let's do a quick question. Let's do a question. Um, This question comes from Reddit, from the Reddit advice column, and it says, feel guilty when parents buy me things. It says, I always feel horrible and really guilty after my parents buy me stuff. But the thing is, my parents are not poor at all. So it's like not affecting them in any way. Plus, I almost never ask them to buy me things, but I still feel this way every time I get something that I ask for. And I still feel this extreme gush of guilt. Please help me. This is becoming unbearable. Okay, here's the problem with that. No stakes. There's no stakes. Oh, oh yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, person. I know this might be a real thing for you, but I don't feel any emotional connection to your problem. I agree. Like you feel, so everything's fine and you're getting gifts and you feel bad, but you also know that you shouldn't feel bad because there's no reason for it. So... This is something I will call fake problem. Could we perhaps workshop this question to be, to put some stakes yes. in there? Yes. So if, if uh, I mean, maybe we could say that her parents are poor or we could say she needs, what's something she just really needs? Maybe she needs a car or a yacht or. <laughs> a yacht. <laughs> I just need a yacht and my collection will be complete. <laughs> I'll collect it all for. Oh, God. Um, right. Okay. So let me think about this. How about it's, um, I mean, you know, I would, uh, this is what I would offer. I would offer something like, um, my parents buy me gifts and they, be, and it, it doesn't, um, like I'm a child and I want them to treat me like an adult. Oh. Right. Something like that, that you would go like, oh, I know that feeling when you want your parents to like see you eye to eye because you're a grown up now, but they can't let go. So they're still, you know, whatever sending you. And, you know, some people are like, oh my God, my, it's like that thing where it's like, oh my God, my aunt still sends me a $25 check or something like that. Like I'm a, like I'm a 12 year old or something. Yes. 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 Like I wish she would send me a thousand dollars and no, like, yeah, like, or nothing or nothing. Cause I don't (laughs) need it. Yes, exactly. I'm independent. I can buy my own yachts. I feel like that's right. I, I, I am. A, I love that. That's beautiful. So, 
we are sending back your question. <laughs> yeah, sorry. With sorry. some red lines and notes. <laughs> and then when you have a real problem. Make it better. Come back. To Make us. it better. Yeah, that's right. Oh, man. Making it better is what you did to this episode, Ophira. Thank you so much for joining. This was an absolute oh, blast. It was great to talk to so you. So fun. So fun. I, I ha- Please, please let me know how your storytelling de- debut goes tonight. Somehow, oh. please let me know. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. I am I was, even before this, just listening to you, and I was going to carry the essence of Ophira which might be an Armani scent. I'm not sure, but I, I was going to carry that with me to the story. Cause I, I felt a lot of inspiration from you, a lot of some inspiration from Chris um, and Gethard. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going to try and make this happen. Oh, so th- well, that, thank you so much. Flattering. This, no. And, and it's all true. And I appreciate all the insights in this uh, school of hard knocks that you led. <laughs> in, in, I don't know if I'm using that right. School of, I don't know. They were knocks. They were no, were they knocks? They weren't knocks. They were, there were some knocks. There were some knocks. There were some tumbles. There were some, I don't yeah. know, slams. It, it, there were some slams. Exactly. <laughs> some gentle nudges. It was just all sorts of getting in the right direction. And I feel like getting my right arrow, direction. it's going to hit a target sooner or later. So thank you so much. I, I was also going to ask, I know you have your um, your show coming up. What? Where can people follow you? What else did you, what would you like yeah, to plug? Yeah, Sure. Uh, if you would like to follow me, I am at Ophira E on everything, uh, or, but I'm also at Ophira on Venmo. So maybe you just want to just go there. That's always a great place to follow someone. Um, nice, I guess, nice. you know, yeah. Also, yeah. So I have a new, uh, I, if you're in the New York area of a live <laughs> album taping on August 1st at New York Comedy Club. If you go to my website, OphiraEisenberg.com, you can click and find all the details. Uh, it's pretty easy or the socials kind of stuff there. Um, yeah, and also you could buy my book, Screw Everyone Sleeping My Way to Monogamy. There's an audio version of it. If you prefer to listen, you know, you can go and listen to the to the uh, audible version of it. If you'd like listening to things, it is a lighthearted tale of escapism and fun that will will you know, if you want to get away from life about dating and relationships. Uh, nice, and it's a little, nice. also a little deep. It's got some deep parts. Um, but yeah, Bring and other than that, there's going to be lots of other dates uh, on the calendar. I just found out that I'm going to go to Denver on August, I think it's 18th, 19th, and 20th with Maria Bamford. So if any of your oh. listeners are around there, you can come. I mean, Maria Bamford's a good enough ticket as it is, and I'll be with her. Oh, that's absolutely incredible. And guys, all those links are going to be in the show notes, just in case all those Ophiras out there. Not <laughs> well. Thanks. You get it right because you can just click your little thumb right there. So yeah. awesome. Well, thank, thank you. you so much again, Ophira. Yeah. And, so, uh, oh my goodness. Thank you. Oh, this was such a blast. And thank you so much for watching, listening, or Whatever other senses you applied to this episode, I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Support Ophira. Links in the show notes. Follow her. Watch her live. And follow me if you have not already. I I feel it. I don't feel all of you guys are following me. You know that sense you get when somebody's following you? I'm not getting it. I don't feel like you guys are doing it. So please do it. Links in the show notes. And... Follow yourself. Give yourself some support, some love. Use those two legs or three legs for the Nebraskans and love yourself. Love yourself for a long time or a brief time, however much you need to love yourself with a hug. I'm talking about hugs, guys. Uh, PG-13, okay? Well, no, sorry, not a PG-13 hug. I don't know how that would go. A little grab on the tush. I don't know. But anyway, you guys have been amazing. Love you guys so much. And big old gooch smooch. Mwah.